Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, we asked you in our last video if you guys would like to see what else we are planting in our summer garden, and we got the message loud and clear. We're so excited that you guys want to see what we're planting because this year the theme of our garden is back to basics, and we are planting only the things that we absolutely love to grow, love to eat, and that we know we can can and preserve for the winter. Our hope for today is to get the rest of this entire garden planted. We've enlisted some help. You'll see the girls in the background here and there. Uh, but hopefully by the end of the day, this entire garden is planted with everything that we're wanting to grow. That would be great because other than this garden, we still have a lot of other things that we want to get planted for the summer. So we have a lot of work ahead of us. Let's get started. The first thing that we are starting with today are the green beans. We absolutely love green beans here. We can a lot of them so that we can eat them over the winter. Our favorite type of green bean is contender bean. And this year we are planting two 50 foot rows of green beans. Now, normally we get our contender beans from Baker Creek, but this year they were out when we stopped by the seed store. So this year we picked up some seeds from our local farm store. The contender bean seeds, they kind of look like actually pinto beans. They're light brown. We're going to be planting these one inch down into the soil and we have them spaced about six inches apart. I'm using a dibble here that is actually marked at an inch right here. So I'm just going to make a hole an inch deep and pop that seed down in there and just cover it up. That's really as easy as it can possibly get. One thing that can help the germination process for these dry beans is to soak them in some water uh, for about 24 hours before you plant them. We don't need to do that because we're expecting about a week of rain coming up. So these guys are going to be plenty wet enough to germinate over the next week or so. Next up in the garden is going to be some soybeans or edamame. Soybeans are something that generally we don't eat a lot of here on the homestead. We try to avoid soy products uh, for the most part, uh, but these fresh soybeans uh, we absolutely love. They're just kind of a treat for us here on the homestead. Uh, we like to just steam them and eat them with a little bit of salt on them and they are just excellent. Now, these are, of course, a non-GMO variety, uh, which is why we avoid most of the soybean stuff in the store is because they're all GMOs these days. So uh, these are a non-GMO variety from Baker Creek called Chiba Green, and they are just an excellent soybean to eat fresh. Uh, actually, there was a restaurant that we used to go to when we lived in the Phoenix area called Payway, and you could order these as an appetizer, and they were absolutely excellent, which is why we decided to grow some last year uh, and they did really well here in this climate. And so we're gonna do some more this year. There's about 30 or so seeds in a packet like this. So we're gonna get these planted today. These uh, are just very similar to the beans in the way that you plant them. You'll basically just make a hole in the ground, put your seed down in, cover it back up and let nature do the rest. So these go down about an inch and a half and we'll plant as many as we can in this row. They look like this, they're a round seed. And again, we'll just go down an inch and a half. We'll just take the seed, drop it in the hole, cover it back up with some soil and move on to the next one. No need to make things more complicated than that. Let's move on and we'll get planting these first few rows of the garden. We're going to finish up our bean planting with the pinto beans we will be planting. Now last year we grew one full 50 foot row of these pinto beans. We loved them so much. This year we are growing two rows. The variety that we are growing is an heirloom variety that we originally got from Baker Creek, but this year they're not offering them. Fortunately, last year we saved a bunch of the seeds, so I have a bunch to plant. 
They're absolutely gorgeous beans, but they also taste fantastic. They dry well, but they also can be canned for fast use. We do both. So just like other beans, these are gonna be planted one inch below the ground, about six inches apart. Now these are climbers. So we have these trellises here that they will be climbing up and we'll be able to harvest them uh, right from here. Again, one inch down, put the bean in there, cover it up and move on. All the bean rows are planted, so it's time to move on. Now we have one row that will be growing two different types of cucumbers and our okra. We're gonna start off with our slicing cucumber that we absolutely love. We're gonna be growing the Market Moore 76. It's a good standard slicer. It's about eight or nine inches, has done really well for us. And then on the other side of the row, we're going to be growing a cucumber called dar. And the reason we really like this cucumber is it stays pretty small. It's bigger than a, than a gherkin, but it's smaller than a standard slicing cucumber. It's a perfect size for doing whole pickles. So it's about six inches, five or six inches, and fits down nicely into a jar. So we're gonna be uh, planting both of these kinds. Now the dar cucumbers don't climb very tall at all. They, they're considered a bush variety, but I still give them something to climb on because it'll still be, you know, two feet or so. The uh, standard slicer, the market more, definitely needs a trellis to climb on. Cucumber seeds are quite a bit smaller than the bean seeds that we've been planting. You can see how small they are. We're gonna plant these a half an inch below the surface of the soil. And just to make sure I get some great germination, I'm going to be putting two seeds in each hole. If I need to thin them out later, I can. Now the center of this row is going to be where we're planting our okra. We're doing cucumbers on both sides and then okra in the middle. And we're doing that so our two cucumber varieties don't uh, cross, the vines don't grow all together, and so they don't cross pollinate so we can save seeds for next year. Now the okra, again, is gonna go right down the middle. We're planting about 10 okra plants, which for our family is plenty. Uh, okra are so prolific that even 10 plants sometimes is more than we need, but we have some to share, or we'll just be able to eat as many as we want and not feel bad about it. So we're gonna start by planting the okra seeds. Now this year we're doing just one variety, probably one of the most tried and true varieties that you can do, and our absolute favorite, the Clemson Spineless. I like them because they're all very uniform in size. You know exactly when to pick them and they are just a great eater. So we're gonna plant these. These go about a half inch to an inch deep in the hole. And once these start to take off, man, they grow fast and you get a lot of okra. All right, so just like the cucumbers, I'm gonna plant two okra seeds in each hole. The way I like to do it is to set the seeds on the ground, push them in about an inch deep and cover them back up. Now on these, we're doing them every 18 inches, which is the recommended spacing. And just like Sarah was talking about earlier with the beans, uh, okra are one of those things that you could definitely soak overnight in some water, and then they'll germinate even faster. But because our 10 day forecast has rain every day for the next 10 days, we're gonna go ahead and just plant them like this, and I think they'll get plenty of water. 
So again, we're doing 10 plants. And because we're doing two seeds per hole, we may have to come back and thin these, but we'll do that as soon as they germinate. We're almost done planting seeds. And the thing I like most about planting seeds in the garden is it goes so fast compared to planting transplants. So we've planted a ton of this garden already just with seeds. So next up are the squash that we will be planting this year. And we're gonna be doing a squash that's kind of like a butternut squash. It tastes a lot like it, uh, but the shape is just a little bit different. We're gonna be doing the Canada crookneck squash. And we're gonna be planting it here next to this trellis. So it has a nice place to climb, to stay out of the way of all the other harvesting and hustle and bustle in here. And the squash will grow up on here and it'll be really nice and easy to harvest. So this is a bigger seed, much bigger than the cucumber seeds. We're going to be planting these a half to one inch deep down into the soil, and we're going to be planting them 18 inches apart. And you can put either one or two seeds down in there just to make sure you've got good germination. So the next thing that we're going to be planting in the garden is pepper plants. Now peppers we don't do from seed in the garden. We start those from seed in the greenhouse. And then by this time we bring the transplants out and plant those. The way we like to do it is with one of these augers. I showed you guys this on the last video that we did, but in case you missed it, uh, this is a great tool to have. I went ahead and added this to our Amazon shop so you guys can take a look at it. But this thing saves you so much time. We bought one last year uh, for the first time and it saved us a ton of time from having to hand dig every hole. Basically, you just use it on your power drill and it digs your hole for you. So I'm gonna go down the row and I'll dig all the holes while Sarah starts to plant. And then when I get to the end of the row, I'll start helping her plant. Well, like Kevin said, we are moving on to peppers. And from here on out, we're gonna be planting all transplants. We had a question in our last video, if we buy our seedlings, our little transplants from someone else and plant them in our garden, or if we start them all here on the homestead, we do start all of our own seedlings here on the homestead. And most years we sell a bunch of them at our local farmer's market. But this year the farmer's market was postponed indefinitely, so we just started enough seeds for us here on our homestead. Now Kevin also said earlier that we are doing a back to basics garden this year. Normally I plant at least two rows of peppers, but this year just one. And that's because we're only planting what we will eat in one year's time. So this entire row will hold 28 pepper plants. Half of them will be bell pepper plants and the other half will be just a couple of our favorite types of pepper plants. The bell peppers that we're gonna be planting this year will be Emerald Giant, which is my absolute favorite, and the California Wonder, which is my runner up. So 14 of these 28 will be these two plants. We'll also be planting the Adjvarsky pepper. It's not a bell pepper, but it is a sweet pepper. This type of pepper you let go red because it's a perfect red roasting pepper. For the first time ever, we're going to be trying some hatch chilies. One of our subscribers last year sent me some seeds for mild, medium, and hot hatch chili peppers, and I'm so excited. We'll be planting one or two of each of these. Our daughter, Samantha, loves two different types of peppers, so I made sure to include a couple plants of each. She loves banana peppers. She likes them pickled and also fermented, and she loves the natapenos. Natapenos are jalapeno peppers that are not spicy at all. They taste just like a jalapeno, but the heat is not there. So we're gonna do a couple of these, but we have to have regular jalapenos. We love the Craig's Grande jalapeno from Baker Creek, so we're gonna do a couple of those. Now that Kevin has all of the holes dug for me in this row, 
it's time for me to get started planting. Pepper plants are planted really just the same as tomato plants. In our last video, I showed you how to plant tomato plants. So today I'll show you how to plant pepper plants. So we have our little seedlings here. They're not quite as large as our tomato plants, so we won't be planting them as deep into the ground. Tomato plants and pepper plants will grow extra root system on their stem if you put it down in the ground, but our pepper plants aren't very big, so we won't plant them that deep. So I'm just gonna tip them upside down, get them out of the little pot. The roots are looking good. Now, the secret to growing great pepper plants, and in my opinion, really any plant, is to start with a big handful of dried rabbit manure down in the bottom of the hole. So I'm gonna put a nice amount down there. And that really is a great kickstart for these transplants. Just set this down in the hole gently, and then backfill with the native dirt. Now it's important to make sure that there are not any air pockets down in there. An air pocket will not kill a plant, but the roots won't grow there. So you need to make sure that you get dirt all around there. Now also, I like to put just a little sprinkling of the rabbit pellets on top, almost as a time release fertilizer. Press that in there. As simple as that. That's the first pepper plant of the season. Now we need to do 27 more. Now we're moving back on to tomatoes. Now in our last video, we showed you that we planted one row of Jet Star tomatoes, which are our absolute favorite tomatoes to grow. Every year they do well. They're very disease resistant. Uh, they do well all summer long. They put on several crops of tomatoes and they just are always a good, big size, consistent, and hands down our favorite to grow. In this row, we're doing kind of our backup favorites. We're gonna do half of this row as Jet Setter tomatoes, which is very similar to the Jet Star, uh, but in our experience, not quite as prolific. So we're gonna do half of this row with Jet Setter, and then we're gonna do the other half with Celebrity, which is another hybrid tomato that has always done well for us. You may wonder why if the Jet Star always does well for us, why don't we just do two full rows of that? Well. Every year is a little bit different with tomatoes and it's always best to try a couple varieties that you know do well so that you're kind of hedging your bets just in the rare case that something happens and you want some more diversity. So that's why we always do mostly the Jet Stars and a few backups to make sure we have a good year. In the past, we have always grown two rows of tomatoes, but this year I kept getting the nagging feeling that we needed one more row of tomatoes. I couldn't shake the feeling, so this is our third row. The extra row actually is the second row of slicers. We normally do one row of slicers and one row of paste tomatoes. So this row is a row of paste tomatoes. We're gonna be doing mostly opalka, spelled O-P-A-L-K-A, -A, a great sauce tomato, paste tomato. The second variety is called Salvaterra, and this is the first year we're growing that tomato, but the seeds came highly recommended, and they were sent to us from one of our subscribers. We're gonna be mixing in a couple plants of Dad's Sunset, which is a yellow orange tomato. We tried that last year and absolutely loved it, so we're gonna put a few of those plants in this row. And I'm also gonna sneak in a couple plants of tomatillos so that we can make some tomatillo salsa. So that is the third and final row of our tomatoes. If you missed us planting tomatoes and showing you how, make sure you check out our last video. But to tell you a secret, it's just like planting the peppers.
Next up for planting are the sweet potato slips. Now we started all these sweet potato slips just from sweet potatoes that we found, organic sweet potatoes that we found at our local health food store. We actually put them in a jar of water on the windowsill and we grew all of these amazing sweet potato slips. The jar method worked really well for us. I did that in a video, we'll link to that here but it really was uh, effective for us. So we're gonna plant these. We're planting two rows this year, uh, two 50 foot rows, 18 inches apart. So we'll have almost 60 plants in the ground. We're growing two varieties this year, Garnet and Jewel. They're pretty easy to plant. So I'm just gonna take these out of the jar and just lay them out so I can make sure to pick the ones with really nice root systems. And I have a hand shovel here. I'm going to put that down pretty far into the dirt. And then just rock it back and forth a little bit to create a space there. I'm going to take one of these sweet potato slips and take off some more of these leaves put that down in there, in that hole. I'm going to take a little spatula and just poke down at the roots to make sure that they're all down in there. And then I'm going to pull the soil back over onto them. That's it. So we have two more rows of these to plant. It'll be pretty easy. Now one thing I learned is that in the first 60 days that these slips are in the ground, they need to be well watered. But after that, they're pretty drought tolerant, which is good for summers that dry out. But we have a nice watering system, and I think it will keep it well watered. This very back row of the garden is going to be sunflowers. We'll grow these for us to eat some and for the animals to be able to eat some. We're growing the uh, mammoth gray striped sunflowers, which get really tall and put on really big flowers. And these uh, we're going to be planting from seed, and we'll just put these down a half inch into the ground. And hopefully this will just add some nice color back here to the back of the garden. This entire garden is planted. It took us about seven hours with all four of us out here working today, but we got the entire thing planted. It was a really good job done. So in the end, we have five 50 foot rows of beans. About 90 tomato plants. Plus we'll be planting extra in big planting tubs, all of our cherry tomatoes and some specialty tomatoes we're going to be trying. 50 feet of peppers. About uh, 30 crookneck squash plants, I think. Yep, two 50 foot rows of sweet potatoes, a row of sunflowers. Right, cucumbers, okra. Yeah, so I think that's pretty much it for this garden. Right, now we do have a second garden that is the same size as this. And this year, that one will be used for only two things. Half of it, or maybe even a little more than half of it, will be for sweet corn, and the other part will be for watermelons. Last year, we had such a great watermelon season. I'm hoping we do the same thing this year because there is nothing better on a hot day than a nice homegrown watermelon. And this year, I have a lot of herb plants, and I'm gonna plant them in those big Crystal Licks buckets that you've been seeing us plant in. I don't have a permanent place yet that I know where I want my big herb garden. I started one last year, but just didn't end up getting it all planted. So until I know for sure, they're just gonna be in those buckets. And we've got maybe 20 to 25 more of those buckets to plant. We're glad you guys all wanted to come along today as we planted this garden so that you could learn the varieties that we're planting and see what works for us. We would love to hear also what varieties you're planting this year and what's gonna work for you because there's always more to learn and more things to try in the future.
If nothing else, we hope that we've inspired you to do some planting or even a little bit more planting than you normally do this year. You guys, if you're enjoying our channel, please hit the subscribe button and the best way to help us is to share our videos on all your social media with people who you know would enjoy what we're doing here. And until next time, <laughs> until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.